Hey guys, Harry here, uh, back with another Britlane vlog. This is just some more footage that I had left over from Friday's video. Because um, I recorded about another two or three course um, on this gable on the um, from the beginning clip that you saw in real time. So uh, basically, um, I've just thought I'd go over a little bit of a technique, what I'm using in this video. Um, it's called the long, long bed pick and dip and it's something that I've had to sort of adapt to using on these concrete bricks because there's a sort of a fine art to trying to you know lay them without bellying, lay them so they're stable you know all the sort of issues you have with concrete blocks and ready mix you have the same uh, issues with concrete bricks um, obviously just on a lesser scale because there's obviously more more in a wall to hold them all together than there is block work um, so you'll see what sort of technique I'm using. Um, I'm going to change the way I do this. I'm going to try and up my efficiency a little bit more because obviously all my videos, you know, I try and speak about being efficient, making your day easier. Obviously with the acquisition of stands, acquisition of um, obviously keeping your bricks at waist level, um, just using different working practices to make everything a bit easier because it's brick lanes are really um it's a hard trade if you make it hard it's really hard if you make it hard but if you try and make it as easy as you can for yourself by just changing the way you work um, if you've got a hard carrier or you've got an apprentice or you've got another bricklayer working with you try and change the way they work as well so you're all working um you know in sync in sync really to where you're making everything easier you'll all get more done everyone will make more money the gang will make more money um if you're on a split, everyone's split will go up, etc. Um, <coughs> so it all benefits everyone and it makes your life a lot easier. As you can see, using the 9 inch trowel, I'm going to get a wide um, London version of this. Still 9 inch. I think they're either 9 or 9.5 inch. I've not actually measured it with a tape, so I can't really give you an, uh, an exact answer on that, but I'm sure it, it looks about 9 to me. Um, <coughs> with how small it feels. Um, but as you can see I've done the long bed here all the way along I'm using like some quite soft ready mix today as you can see and what I should have done here I should have once I'd completed a course worked my way back to the other end of the wall so I moved one line up at the fits brick at this you know my big rack back here at the closest to the camera and then work my way back spreading and then move the lines up as I got to the end of my spread um, normally the missus moves the far line up and I move the profile lineup. I try not to let any um, anyone move the lines up on the profiles unless they're just <coughs> one that we're tailing out to, because this one on the corner can move. And I know a lot of get, a lot of people aren't really privy to moving lines up on corner blocks. They push against the profile to move the line up. So that's one thing I found. I could put a timber clamp on these profiles to uh, obviously stabilize them more. And I do, I do, I have done it before, but the, these profiles I'm using at the moment, they're really minimalist. They only reach 21. They can literally reach well, we're three course below uh, where I set them up. They reach 21 exactly. And, and and at the moment with these concrete bricks, I can't really reach any higher comfortably without them coming over on me in one day. So 21 is kind of the height I've I've also, well, I've well like sort of limited myself to here. I do plan on getting some more. Uh, aluminium profiles at some point because these have seen better days I've had these of all I've had a couple of, a set of these for about six months that I found on another on an old site I worked on I found them in a in a site that had been finished in a cavity found a pair of, of uh, steels I've got another two pairs of aluminium uh, another two pairs of aluminium profiles that are a bit light all gauge taped up but the old man cut 300 mil off of them fit him in his buddy in his uh, estate car so he kind of ruined them they're not they're not quite long enough anymore and these are also the same but I only use I use the heavy ones for the corners and I use the light ones to tail out to or for like you know stop ends up reveals so I do need to get some bigger ones soon just uh, you know about 300 basically 225 bigger um, at least I think he, he cut 150 off of them but it makes them just so you'd need that extra bit you know I suppose you could just move them up they don't take two minutes to move them up but um, I'm happy at going to 21 
21 uh, is sort of ideal for my height. I'm only like 5'9"-ish. Um, so, yeah, as you can see using the, the long bed pick and dip here, um, with obviously having a drop zone, uh, I just, uh, and the mortar being quite wet all the time in winter, we use all of us, I scrape everything up the back to reuse. You can get quite a few more bricks laid out of your mortar for this, especially when using ready mix. Uh, and as you can see as well, uh, you can't really get, you can't really get like a one scrape with these bricks, they're just too wet, the, the mortar's too wet on them. It's part of a minimum of a two, two scraped uh, bed joint there, as you can see. Uh, and they always need a little bit of extra minute movement. So you'll see me doing a couple of scrapes, a, a little, you know, sort of a uh, shoe shine on them. And uh, it's sort of the best, the best, th this video that you've seen is the, probably the quickest I've laid them and the most sort of accurate. I always say in my videos, you know, there's guys who try a little bit too hard uh, when they're brick laying, there's, they try to make it too, too perfect. And all you've got to do is gauge level plumb. That's the end of the day. Um, you know, obviously, um, you know, with the stuff, with with the criticisms I've had on site, you know, with um, with with people putting my level up my work, it's something you ain't gonna you ain't gonna get too anxious on yourself. You know, um, you've got to trust your own ability, like I said last video, and and if you know your your, your profiles a gauge, your profiles a plumb, your profiles level, and you've checked it with your level after you finish, that's one thing we're doing now. We're checking all his all his reveals, all his main plumb points with a level afterwards to make sure there's been no movement. Um, you know, it's hard to explain to managers that these bricks will move after you've laid them. And if, you know, they check it and there's been some sort of sinkage or and uh, some sort of any sort of movement in the bricks after you've laid them, you know, it's down to you then. So we're che we're taking a little bit of that away with, uh, with uh, basically checking them, checking them best we can, but we ain't, that's one thing that I'm not trying to do is be fucking too of myself. I've got to just get the bricks laid at the end of the day. We're on price. As long as we, as we all we can use is as levels and check, and that's all we can do. You can't stop the gear. You can't change the gear. You can't make suddenly a concrete brick become a like a clay brick, and vice versa. So I've been sort of racking my head of how I want to approach these houses a bit more because I, I don't like being defeated by what I'm I'm doing. I like to sort of anything I'm doing, I don't want to be defeated by it. I just want to make it work. And these bricks, they're a struggle at times, especially when it's just a bit damp weather. There's a bit of damp fog in the air, everything's staying wet. And these bricks, it only take a, a few downpours of rain and packs will be saturated. And there's going to be not much we can do there. Uh, I'll be probably going back to really stiff gear and pick and dip. I've noticed when these bricks do get really wet and dark, you'll see them get quite dark when they get wet, these bricks. They become where you need to use your gear really stiff. It's like sort of uncomfortably stiff, really, your gear. And then I go back to doing a sort of a, a pick and dip. But if the gear's a bit stiff, you have to go to, back to doing like a uh, a traditional pick and dip. If you, see it, uh, if you watch uh, Andy from Brick Lane Worldwide, he did a video called Pick and Dip with Full Joints. If you watch how he does that, I've tried doing something similar. Um, basically the same as what he did for Spread for One. Quickly quickly smash a perp joint on it and next one. And it's quite it's quite easy enough to do. Uh, and it's definitely one thing you, you can do if your gear is dry. If you've got stiff gobbo, and like for instance, if these bricks are wet, you'll need stiff gobbo to even make any progress. Um, you can actually get these bricks up. It, it reduces your speed, you know, a lot. You know, I mean, I can't give you an exact, exact, you know, how much it's going to reduce your speed, but it's going to, you're going to require more movement every brick to get it down. Um, so yeah, that is um, that is one of those things. That is one of those things that you've got to be, uh, you know, wary of with these bricks. They are. They're just nasty to work with, but we, we but the the buildability of these houses is quite really easy. Um, apart from having to just be on the ball with us, just checking everything for level. You know, it's it's not very nice when um, stuff's constantly under getting checked. You know, um, any brick will tell you if you know if a, if a supervisor or a site agent keeps coming and checking you work with level. It's not nice. It's not it's not nice to be always 
to work, scrutinise, but I suppose, you know, it is what it is. But we, we, we're not letting uh, anyone find any excuse to, with his work for it to be wrong, so we're making sure everything's bang on, um, because uh, we take pride in his work, you know. Uh, I've had that questioned a few times over the over my years of bricklaying, and there's, there's no doubt in my mind that, you know, I think my work's the best, and you've got to have that confidence. You've got to have that confidence if you, you've got to believe in yourself. Number one, it doesn't matter if so, you could have people can call you rough, people can call you fucking whatever. I've had I've had some right slates against me probably over the years, without my knowing. Uh, but you've got to you've got to believe that your work's the best, and you, you, then you take out any doubt out of your mind. So that's one thing that people don't want to say. People don't like to say it, but you've got to think your work's the best. Or you've got to think your work's you know, no worse than anyone else, or no better than anyone else, and you've got to think it's it's good enough, it's good or good enough in your mind, and then you'll, you know, that's what drives that, um, it drives your progression to become a bit faster, that's why I said in the last video's uh, thumbnail, if you saw it, it said confidence is the key to progress, and it is, it may, it'll make, it'll, what will turn you from like an apprentice to a full, full fledged bricklayer, or an improver, or apprentice to improver, etc. It's the confidence factor is the main thing. Um, as I said about these meter boxes, these were these need altering. Um, me and another bricklayer, we all we copied another house. Uh, we we got told to go to the where the pipes are. There's no measurement on these drawings to tell us otherwise. So uh, that was just a bit of teething issue with the with the site really. Um, so no one's fault really there. But we. Um, we're gonna have, we're gonna have to alter those. It's probably gonna take me, I reckon, probably an hour per meter box. I reckon uh, to alter them all, maybe an hour and a half. So probably add all that up. It's almost a full day. I reckon. I don't know how many of us is gonna be in. I know Mel's gonna be in. We're gonna be at least a one on one. And then Dean's. I think Dean should be back. Um, if I don't hear anything else, so hopefully he's back in. And and then we should be able to crack on um, with this continuing this house. You know. Um, I wanted to get all these meter boxes done straight away because then it takes any, you know, at least we've altered them then. Uh, it gives us another bit, another bit, and another day's work really, you know. We're getting paid for it, we're getting, you know, we're getting day work for sorting it. And I'd rather put it right myself than have someone else come to alter it when, when the house is finished. It's a lot harder job. Um, <coughs> so, yeah. Um, but you can see you uh, laying these other sailors here. This one thing I was doing as well with these. I didn't use the long bed these, I used to just single pick and dip them, but I realised the spread isn't going to go off on the brick below. It's only going to go, it's only going to go off on the course above this, so... I uh, still long, long bedded this, it made it a lot quicker. There's a bit a big advantage to doing a long bed pick and dip ver um, version, you know, it's... It's more accustomed, especially when your gear is more wet. This is one thing I like to do with silo gear. When you silo gear, you can't always get it just how you want it because it, it goes off quite quick. So you have to get it on the wetter side sometimes or put a bit of a of a swimming pool in the bottom of your tub to keep your, your mix alive. Uh, this is more accustomed in summer, but it comes in handy in winter as well because in winter, y y your silo gear stays nice. It stays nice for the duration, you know. Probably an average tub you'd fill in the silo because they're a bit, they're normally a bit smaller than when you get ready mix. You know, it'll last. I think a, a tub of silo gear will last in us like three hours, whereas like a tub of ready mix lasts in us probably four hours on average because they're a bit bigger. And then we're normally using about two tubs of ready mix a day. And then on the silo, we used to use like two and a half tubs on a good day, and um, you're getting a using a bit more gear on the silo side especially you can brim silo tubs but they're never really as big and you find that oh, if you brim a silo tub from a silo the bottom always gets too hard or it gets needs a lot of knocking up it's only in really really damp and, and wintry months that it'll stay alive on you and even some gear still st goes off depending if it's good silo gear or bad silo gear <coughs> I had the missus here carrying me bricks, uh, she did a really good job, I, I think I mentioned last video but I didn't emphasise it enough, it's so much easier having someone with bricks to hand, she does such, such a good job stack, tendering, stacking the bricks up, because uh, she refilled these stacks from the pack a few times and she stacked them at waist height and she kept, um, she, she kept the mortar 
go come in really i had to knock it up a few times um just to keep it just keep it it was actually really good today i mean i said i had to just mix it around in the tub and if you know ready mix they have a pot of plastic bag in the tub it, it becomes quite awkward to get your gear out so i had to just get a quick mix about for fat for a couple of minutes um the tub was right next to where we're working as well so um I got my gear, I think I got my water once. I refilled the belt boards once when she was when she was tidying up and that was about it. So she did really well. She got more or less all the mortar. Um, and did some tidying up. I did a lot of tidying up from the previous day as well. Moved all the spots around. I didn't touch a spot board today. Um, what else? Cleaned all the, all the all gear from the other gables. So I took all the like, old bricks, everything like that. And... I know like for you guys on YouTube, you'll be like, well, that's like what a labourer does, right? But it's like, I've had t tons of crap labourers, tons of shit odd carriers who can't even do the most simplest of things. Like she pointed literally all my all my work today. There was only the last three course where it gets really wet, where she feels uncomfortable pointing it. And she did everything. And also another little tip with these oversailers, I don't bother jointing underneath them anymore. I just rub my, rub my finger with a nice smooth glove underneath it gives it a nice full joint and it stops it getting that drain pipe effect under your oversailers that's one thing that it, it doesn't bring your oversailers out as as pronounced you know on these houses i know they're not um they're just a simple sort of boxy build they're not sort of um then and because of the brick as well they don't look as nice as they would with a clay brick um they're a bit of a bland house they're a bland house really these concrete bricks don't make them look nice uh, which I've sort of I've asked on I've asked the site agent and I said are we going back to to clay bricks at some point because they just make a better job they they look nicer um, these concrete bricks they're not I don't they're not nice to work with and I don't think they they give as nice a finish you know especially when the mortar goes off it goes really white I don't and some of the dark bricks on the white mortar looks I don't think it looks it it makes as nice a finish but you know. Um, with these um, with these oversales, at least it gives it a bit of character. Uh, with with the small amount of detail that's in these houses, I think it, the, at least the the oversellers, if you make a good job of them, make them stand out. They look at least better than the face work, and that's why I do like the fact that these have soldiers over throughout the whole um, throughout the whole build. You have soldiers in some areas, uh, on obviously over your windows and and near your, near your wall plate. Uh, so it does give these houses a bit of character, you know, sometimes, you know, they're not the nicest house, they're not the nicest looking house, I don't think, but I only build them just because they are good money. It, at the end of the day, you should you should only be sort of building houses that make you money. It's alright building a house with three bays in it and a load of fucking stone heads, but you're not going to make any money doing that on price, so you sort of we're sort of limited as bricklayers to not always building houses that that we think look nice but we just build houses that pay well you know what i mean whereas the prices on these houses they're actually quite good for for uh, for what they are uh, obviously the, the concrete ricks slow you down a bit but at the end of the day we've, we you've got to sort of even you'll you'll watch charlie collison's video more on this where he was saying whether it was getting sick of building boxes and i can understand why they're very samey to build uh, but he said basically it's either i build boxes and make some good money or I build some awkward and make fuck all and it's like you know that's why he's doing this private work at the moment you can tender a price to that you know to account to account for that awkwardness obviously whether whatever he's doing a different bond not spectra bond obviously and all the ins and outs and everything it's it's not always um it's not always you know it's not always a, you're not always building work that that you've you're really passionate about when you're building boxes it, sometimes you're just trying to get the measure in you're trying to get the gear in make a neat job make sure it passes and on to the next one and i think that's it's hard well it's hard to sort of to to explain that to people because it's it's the only trade in brick lane where the more complicated the work is the less you get paid um especially when it comes to price and day work sort of a set day work anyway so it doesn't matter what you're building if you're getting a 200 a day for instance that's an average day work wage you know that's what you're getting regardless what you get regardless what you're building so it's quite hard to explain to people but it is what it is um 
and that's it obviously you can see me here checking the sticks i always check these around every three or four course they don't move to be honest because i get my f clamps pretty tight i oil my f clamps as well so they go you can tighten them really well um sometimes all i just do is slide a tie wire down around the back of these and then obviously at the end there is sometimes a couple of paper thing paper thick gaps probably the width of a trowel's width where i can where there is little gaps so i just ease out them bricks to the corner and everything make sure there's no gaps between the level it's obviously keen keen as hell on here which you know i suppose because of these bricks the way they are they've got to be but um i've never had i've never been on a site with so much scrutiny over my work <laughs> i'm honest i'm honest it's uh it's hard it's hard i've never been i've never been scrutinized i sort of Last firm I worked for, they knew it was neat, they knew all my work, if they looked at it and it looked really, if it looks right, it's right, and they looked at it every, one of, every bit of my work and they knew it was cock on, so I've never really been been scrutinised like that, but it's one of them things, I suppose, you live it, you obviously more experienced in it, every, every site you go on, this is why I emphasise people, um, if, um, if, you know, the more sites you go on, the more, the more people you'll come across, the more situations you work under, and you just know, um, and it just broadens your, broadens your horizon, as they used to say. Uh, you have more experience, and you know what to look for, and you know, in a way, to make your work a bit neater in areas that you know that are going to be, that faults going to be found on them. And uh, that's that's one of the things. That's one of the things. But we're going. We're, we're still carrying on. We're still carrying on. We get, I think we're doing quite well on this uh, on this job. The, the work's going up quite well. Um, considering how considering how stringent everything is, and that's sometimes the case. Sometimes on the most simplest of builds, they can be the most stringent. You know, I've found on some work that I've been done in the past where there's been part render bays, uh, get big in and out garage integral garage pillars and stuff like that, where the work is fairly complicated. Um, there was some of the most relaxed sites I've been on. You know, where there's corbels everywhere, over sailors stone sills um some you know it, it, sometimes I've, I've some of the most complicated work has been some of the most relaxed work conditions you know and um it's strange it's a strange uh it's strange what we've uh yeah We're building these these nice simple boxes that you can't really get wrong um i suppose with these bricks it's the way it's the way of the world you're gonna get with the with the with the gear it how awkward it is to lay i suppose people are more agent site agents are more wary with how uh how these bricks it's weird <laughs> if it can happen it will happen and i suppose that's the way of life but yeah so i hope you, everyone's enjoyed this uh, my little video on these concrete bricks um i think this is going to be uh, i'm going to name this video a bit uh influenced by rob songer i'm going to name it the fine art of concrete bricks uh, because they're not a fine art to them. <laughs> they're a right awkward piece of fucking, right awkward lump of concrete to lay. So, uh, thanks so much for watching, guys. Hope you've enjoyed the sort of daily videos. I, I try to record now every day with just some sort of time lapse. It, it only takes me two minutes to set up a time lapse, not even that. And my phone's got a lot more storage. Uh, this new Android Poco X3 I'm using has tons of storage, has a good camera on it. And I just switched from using head cam or my go on my action cam. Um, I've not been doing as much head cam, um, just because they, they all, I can't get it around my hat all the time. And if I take my hat off, sometimes I get told to put it back on, even though it's freezing. And I like to have my just my hood on. Um, but I'm going to start getting a woolly hat and shove my my head strap around it. I try to do head cam when they're in a lot of activity on site with the site, ag site agents and stuff so I could put set my hard hat off for, for a cup for you know 10-15 minutes maybe 20 minutes and get my get some footage and then bang it back on but you know it's what it is um, I'm gonna just work between doing you know voiceovers and time lapse and head cam and try to give you guys a sort of um, a real accurate representation of our build all these houses so Anyway guys, thanks a lot for watching, if you enjoyed, subscribe, hit the like button, leave a comment, and I will see you next week with another one.